Hi guys, Keith Arkberg Farms. It's about the uh, second week of February and it's actually nice, not windy and drying up out here. So, you can see in the back of the truck there, it's time to start throwing down some amendments for the season. So, uh, I'll get to it, kind of talk you through what my plans are. Also, as a reminder, every third Thursday of the month, we do a live Q&A to answer all your questions and talk about what's going on on the farm. That's the third Thursday every month at 5 p.m. Central Time. Also, don't forget to go over to arkenbergfarms.com, scroll down the bottom, digital tools and training. Got a bunch of cool spreadsheets down there. Then finally, we are booking Mother Earth News Fairs this year. I'm going to be at all four of them. We're going to be doing Texas, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Lawrence, Kansas. While I'm there, I'm going to be setting up some console times to set up an hour to go over whatever you'd like to discuss on your farm. Um, I will be getting ready to start booking those. They'll be on the website as well. So hope to see you all there and uh, help everybody out as much as possible. So I got my soil test back. And they're showing that I have low pH in this block and then that block down there, and then the whole rest of the property, which I already knew the rest of the property part. But what really gets me is that I'm down to like a 5.9 and like a 5.4 down the other field block. I checked my soil test from last year, and on this block, the pH was darn near perfect. So that means one of two things. Either one, the amount of nitrogen I added out here this year, ate my pH and pushed it down. Two, when I redid all the beds out here, I picked up a lot of the uh, soil from the pathways and pushed it in the beds. I've always traditionally just put lime in the beds I'm working on. So the walk path I'm on right here and the walk path that's right over here does not get any lime on it. I did this specifically to actually save uh, money on material because each of these walkways basically make a bed. So that really starts to add up. Especially when you try to find pelletized lime this year and you gotta to go to a nursery, which is $12 a 40 pound bag, which is stupid and ridiculous, but that's besides the point. I need it, I've gotta have it. But looking at my test this year, it's telling me that I need a ridiculous amount of lime. I can actually show you over here. Let's see, do I got my bucket with me? I might have to go get the bucket. But it's telling me seven and a half pounds per 100 square foot. Um, some of that has to do with the pH of the soil, which is at 7 point, or not 7, it's at 5.9 and the buffer pH is at 6.8. There's online calculators you can use and kind of do the math and do all that figuring. So for that, just doing the math and the figuring with online calculators, I'm only going to mix it 6 inches deep, maybe 4. It's telling me I need the same thing. I need 50 pounds per thousand square feet. You divide that by 10, that of course gives you five pounds per 100 square foot. Each of these beds, and there's two of them going down here, are 100 square foot. So there's 200 square foot here. So that's 14 pounds of lime that I need to put down. And to me, that just sounds crazy. And here, I will show you exactly why. When I first prepped all of these beds in this whole entire field, I started off with a 40 foot long bed, 30 inch wide market bed, 100 square feet. I used this much lime, you really can't see through the cup, but the cup's only filled up to where my thumb's at. That is a quarter of a pound per 100 square feet. Now, they want me to add seven and a half pounds per 100 square feet, which is this whole entire jug here. And that just sounds completely crazy to me. Um, the only, only, only thing I can really figure is maybe possibly that because of uh, the fertilizer I'm using, the Nature Safe, it has no lime in it, which I would not doubt. But the stuff I was using before, the Dr. Earth, had lime in it. 
because what I saw over the years is in plot one and uh, three behind me, behind me over there, the pH slowly crept up and I had to start ask, adding uh, sulfur to it to bring the pH back down. I've been working to get that pH to come back down for a couple years now. So that's where it really uh, just kind of confuses me of why it's adding so much. So instead of adding that much, which is seven and a half pounds, I've got my drop spreader here. I've got it calibrated out. Basically the way I calibrated it was I put some out and just walked through the field, not in the bed area, but up through the grass area. That if I run it on, I think it's number 10, when I've got all the stuff cut out from when I calibrated it for dropping my fertilizer, I'm gonna drop about three pounds per bed. Still sounds like a lot. It's like four times, five times the amount I added initially. But that's kind of what the soil tests are dictating and what it's indicating I should do. So we will uh, see how this works and hope for the best. I mean, I haven't seen horrible growth. Like in one of these plots, it's wanting seven and a half pounds per hundred square foot. The other one's wanting 11, which is just, again, crazy. So I'll add three and the next year I'll have to check again. That being said, don't be afraid to question the results you get on some of these soil tests. I mean, don't necessarily question it. That seven pounds is probably gonna bring me up to a seven. I'm at like a five, nine and a five, four. I wanna be about a six, three. That's kind of what I aim for. That way I can always add a little bit more later. So I'm gonna go on the lighter side because the other number just to me just sounds insane. I mean, I don't know why I would ever wanna add that much to it. But again, the only reason I can think that that might've actually dropped my pH that much before I tested the soil again because when I went through this bed over here behind me, I actually went through and tilled all the pathways into the beds themselves. I tested a little bit later than usual, but that shouldn't really mess with the pH that much. So for now, I'm going to be conservative and spread less than I uh, positively, absolutely have to have in there. And then pretty much just go from there. So I've got the drop uh, spreader already set up. I'm going to fill it up and just start running this thing. Got out granddad's old tractor here behind me. Old uh, 7100 Kubota. I got my little tiny tiller on the back because now I've got to work in all of that calcium and actually get it deep. So I actually have to go and till deep. This is the one instance ever on this farm that we actually do a deep tillage just to till. And we're actually using tiller, so we're actually inverting. But we're doing that to mix all of that calcium in deep to adjust the pH on the whole plot. Now, when I ran the pH out, or the pH, when I ran the lime out, I actually ran down the beds, just straight down this. But when I come back through, I actually do a different technique to uh, reset the field, basically. It'll take this and kind of push it all over the place as well. So it'll kind of help spread things out. What I do, you can kind of see, here, I'll turn you around. So as you can see, I have offset my tiller. So this one, side leaves a tire track as we go the other side does not because it's actually tilling out past that rear wheel there so i get a perfectly cultivated bed all the way around but you can kind of see some ridges of where the edge is and that's because of the uh the guides i have on the back which we'll get rid of those when we reset the beds but the most interesting part about it is is that we have one two three four and five beds we're down here we only have four so if i just run it tractor tire width i can actually get a whole another four beds full length beds per block if i ever really really need to extend the space out but as you can see down there and everywhere else i really enjoy having these 18 inch wide walkways because they're so much easier to walk in otherwise you're walking in the equivalent of this one tire track right here, which you put your shoe up to it, isn't much longer or wider than your shoe. So basically you're walking the tightrope if you do it with that method to where otherwise you can kind of spread your crops out a little bit further 
in your bed and they can kind of weep over into it and you'll have two tire tracks with just a little bit down the center which makes it a lot easier to work in harvest bins move stuff around and just be comfortable in your beds in general I know so I hope that made things better and not worse I mean it looks nice but that doesn't always mean it is nice so we'll see um, this whole top plot up here is going to be pretty much on drip in uh, plastic mulch this year with something in between to keep the weeds down all the way through so I do know the one big disadvantage with tilling which that tiller only goes I don't know that far anyways you bring up all the grass and all the weed seeds that are down below and i know they're there and it's just going to propagate grass all over the place and probably more winter weeds but hey it is what it is i gotta get the ph up um typically you can just adjust it minutely every year i don't know why i had this big swing we'll just have to kind of watch it i mean we still test every year so we should hopefully catch those things as they happen so as always uh hope you all like what you saw today that was useful if you did don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank y'all. Have a good day. And don't forget, you can also support us continuously through our membership program. The membership program's open. We've got three separate levels. Uh, one sustaining level, one uh, digital tool and training access all around. You get all access to all that stuff. And three would be a half hour of uh, live Q&A with me to consult on whatever you want on your farm. So go ahead, head over to the channel, check it out.